And now, from the Room 111 Studios, it's Hacking Engagement with James Sternovic. What up, listener? Welcome back to the Hacking Engagement Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And last week, Trey Hall and I, we investigated this concept of using storytelling in the classroom. Well, I want to take that idea and elaborate, evolve it, and this time bring in the original sources. And they're going to talk about using storytelling to peer teach one another. And the specific tactic we're going to use is the hero's journey. Now, my friends out in California, the HyperDocs girls, if you go to their website, I'll definitely put a link on the, on the show notes, they have a ready-made template for the hero's journey. Now, when I think of the hero's journey, I think of the late, great Joseph Campbell, the author of The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And he created this 12-step journey that every hero goes through. Well, the HyperDocs girls took that and they condensed it to five steps, which is probably more conducive to the classroom. So here are the five steps. Number one, call to adventure. Number two, entering the unknown. Number three, meeting the mentor. Number four, transformation. And number five, mastery. Now you can take these five phases or five steps and apply them to any significant individual that you're studying in your curriculum. In my case, we applied this template to Siddhartha Gautama and Ashoka. Siddhartha Gautama, of course, is the Buddha, and Ashoka is the father of India. The thing that I really liked about these two individuals, in both cases, their mentor just happened to be female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on a couple of my original sources, and these kids are wonderful. It's Merrick Casper and Samantha Hart. These are two students that are going to come in and talk about their experience taking this template, this hero's journey template, and applying it to historical figures that they didn't know much about. But I have to toss in one more variable. There's a really neat tech tool that we're going to discuss. It's called Storybird. Storybird is a way to make an awesome picture book. Absolutely, there's going to be a link on my show notes. But what these kids did was they applied the five phases of the hero's journey to the creation of a story bird, which told the story of their hero. This is a great tool. It's easy to use, and your kids are going to love it. Buckle up, man. You're going to love this episode, and you're going to be inspired by it. Hey, so get this, listener. My publisher contacts me and says, I love the way hacking engagement is selling. How about doing 50 more? (laughs) I was all over it like a cheap suit. So the name of the book is Hacking Engagement Again, 50 Teacher Tools That Will Make Students Love Your Class. And it's going to be available on Amazon's virtual shelves in the late summer of 2017. In the meantime, if you're looking for more teacher empowerment resources, as always, visit HackLearning.com. Org. Now let's get back to the solutions part of the Hacking Engagement Podcast. So here we are in the Room 111 studios. You know, this time of year, it gets really dark. It's December. The sun goes down at 5 o'clock here in central Ohio. So I wanted to bring some color into my room. <laughs> so I brought, in, I brought in a couple of my buddies. But they're not just my friends. They're also the original sources that I love to bring on that understand teaching better than teachers do. They're the students, man. And and something else that I love is last episode, I was talking to Don Trey Hall, and I was talking about storytelling. Well, by gosh, we got to get the kids involved. we got to get their perspective on things to really be effective in the classroom. So on the left, <laughs> I got one of my buddies. Her name is Samantha Hart. Say hello, Samantha. Hi. But I'm not going to call Samantha by her real name. I'm going to call her by her Sturdivant nickname, which is, get this, Corazon Hunior. <laughs> how in the world did you come up with, how did I come up with that nickname for you? <laughs> well, my last name is Hart, so Corazon is Spanish for heart. Si. Um, <laughs> and my this. sister, who he also had as a student many years ago, was called Corazon, so he called me Corazon Hunior. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you what. I like your pronunciation. It's better than mine. <laughs> Corazon as opposed to Corazon. That's, that's getting it done. I'm anglicizing things. <laughs> On my right, I've got Merrick Casper. Say hello, Merrick. Hi. 
But I'm not going to call Merrick by her, by her real name. I'm going to call her by her Sturdivant nickname, which is epic. She is the cusp. <laughs> As on the cusp of greatness. And, uh, we just came up with that recently. Yeah. You were like, it I, matched my last name. It matches you. You're on the cusp <laughs> of greatness. That's funny. So when I have students on my podcast, I always like to challenge them, <laughs> which is a tough challenge. To describe themselves, to paint a portrait for the audience of themselves at their 10-year high school reunion. So I'm going to start over here with Corazon. Hit it. Um, hopefully, I'll be flying into my uh, reunion from <laughs> no Germany. Kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Germany, man. So you speak German? Um, I speak like three years worth of German. I oh, yeah. We have a great uh, German teacher here at Big One, so I bet you mm-hmm. know your German. Oh, yeah. Frau Craig teaches us German much quicker than a lot of teachers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're prepared to take the AP test um, after four years rather than five mm-hmm. in comparison to other schools. So what are you going to be doing in Germany? Um, hopefully teaching, um, pursuing some artistic things. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like yeah. makeup, so I'll probably be doing um, some makeup for some movie sets and things like that. Kind of just bopping around, kind of traveling. What, what, what's going to be your relationship status at that point in your life? Most likely married, I okay. would say. Okay. All right. Would you like to have offspring? Not at 28. No, that's young. <laughs> Not while I'm trying to travel. I'll tell you what, they kind of crimp your style, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cust, let me lay it on me. Ten, ten year reunion. What are you doing? Tenure, I want to be out of college, have a really good job. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really sure where I'm going to land, but my goal is to eventually travel places and yeah. help developing developing yeah. communities to some mm-hmm. capacity. And this young woman was a missionary in Bali, is that correct? Yes. Wow. Yes. So you had some experience with that. Yeah, I really enjoyed it there, and it motivated me to kind of push my cultural boundaries, if you yeah, will. Yeah, right. And kind of, I don't know, do something that has to do with that, communications. Right. How could I ever retire with kids like this, man? <laughs> it's beautiful. So I brought these young ladies in today, and we're going to talk about this concept of taking storytelling and empowering the kids, deputizing the kids, excuse me, young people, these guys aren't kids, to utilize storytelling. So the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about this assignment. So ladies, jump in at any time. Let's talk about this assignment where we utilize storytelling. For this assignment, we were put into groups of two. Um, Merrick and I were partners. Um, (laughs) One of us had to tell a story about Ashoka, and the other, myself, had to tell a story about Siddhartha, who was the Buddha. Basically, we took this template provided to us, and we told their story in a specific order. Yeah, 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 specific format on Storybird. Okay, before you go any further, when you say you plug the story in, we're talking about plugging this in to the five stages of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard of the hero's journey before we did this assignment? No, actually I didn't, even though it's used in a lot of literature. So when you, when you heard these, when you learned about these different stages, that resonated with you. And you could apply it to other stories as Mm -hmm. well, correct? Yeah, you can read a story or watch a movie and see this template being utilized, but Mm -hmm. not really realize it until you actually see it in order. Well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I remember that day, and I think that I utilized Wonder Woman. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. I I remember going home after class, and, like, all of a sudden, like, this plot line stood out to me. I was like, whoa, like, this is something that applies to, like, every movie that I've watched. Right, And, and it follows this pattern. Right. So, in other words, this this template, this pattern is the way to take... Something that make it make sense. Mm-hmm, exactly. Did you know about Siddhartha or Ashoka before this assignment? I knew about Siddhartha, but I didn't know about Ashoka. Very good. And you had Siddhartha, right? Mm-hmm. Cusp. Yes. You had Ashoka. Had you ever heard of Ashoka? Not at all. I haven't heard about these two topics. I mean, I I kind of have, but like I don't. I didn't know anything about them. Right. So did did the template help you organize your learning? I think it really did. The Hero's Journey template kind of, it it broke up the reading that we did, the research that we did on the um, person Uh that we were researching. It kind of broke up the research to make it easier to understand. Okay. Going back here to Corazon, who you are. Corazon, who you are. (laughs) So we have this this template, 
How did I deliver this template to you? Um, you put it on a series of slides on our Google Classroom、mm-hmm. so that we could see it easily spelled out for us into just the categories. The logical pattern. Now let me ask you this: Mr. Sturdivant is a big fan of putting captivating images、mm-hmm. into everything. Are you wired that way? Do you respond to that? Yeah, I do.、Uh, I think every person responds to beauty. So when we see like a flattering font. Color, like、um, a sturdy font. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> That's beautiful.、Um, it draws our attention and it makes the words resonate in our brain more. Well, one thing I love about these ladies is they're very artistic.、Mm-hmm. Would you agree with the statement that a picture is worth a thousand words? Yeah, I would. And pictures are 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 they they they're mysteries. You're trying to figure why is this image. Associated with this idea,、mm-hmm. so now we've got the idea. One had Ashoka, which is cusp,、mm-hmm. and one had Siddhartha, which is Corazon, Corazon, who you are. <laughs> so you had this this job, and now you're learning about these these folks. So now we're going to communicate this information to our classmates. How do we do that? So one of the ways that we communicated this to our classmates and to my partner here. Yeah,、um, actually, that's right. It was more towards your partner than to your classmates. Right, which was、okay. kind of nice because it was more personal. You were able to get more in depth. I'm so glad you brought that up. So in other words, it was more of a conversation as opposed to a classroom presentation. Well, for sure. Like many of the teachers that in my other classrooms, they make us like stand in front and present. And for me, that. That's happened so often in class that、mm-hmm. you almost become immune to it, and your brain goes into this. It gets、know. boring, doesn't it? Exactly. So this kind of allowed it to be have a purpose, if you will. I'm so glad you brought that up. I forgot that aspect of the assignment.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember anything fast like last week. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> okay, so keep going. So anyway, we used a site called Storybird, and、mm-hmm. this was kind of exciting for me because I'm always constantly trying to find ways to incorporate. Technology or something exciting into projects instead of doing maybe like a typical PowerPoint or、mm-hmm. um, maybe like a poster board or even like an essay. Did you do a, like every period in every class?、Right? Exactly. Yeah. So、um, on Storybird, essentially, it's kind of like a slideshow presentation, but instead you're creating a story or a smaller version of、mm-hmm. the research that you've done condensed down, and you put it on. Slides, and you choose images that you want and text that you want to use. And it looks kind of juvenile. It looks kind of childish in some ways, but that's okay. It actually was super helpful. Right before I, I sat down here, I was like, "Hold on, Ashoka, who's Ashoka?" <laughs> and I scrolled to the first page of my presentation. I was、uh-huh. like, I looked at the picture, and I instantly knew. So it's kind of like that. Memorization,、right. it comes right back because you're forced to rewrite it in your own words. That's beautiful, and and so like these images are just really neat illustrations. Correct. Now the challenge for both of you, and I, I bet you can relate to this, is you're somewhat limited in the illustrations that you could use. So if you're trying to communicate an idea, you might not find an image that necessarily matches that idea. So then you have to get creative and try to think of an image that might. Lead to the idea. Did you, did you have that issue? A couple times, actually, because mostly just animals were coming up, so I had to think <laughs> of what kind of personality does Siddhartha have, right? And right. How can I portray this with an image? And she, Merrick, mentioned an essay, and I actually did this wrong, where I, I. Ended up writing like a five-page essay <laughs> on the <laughs> storybird, <laughs> which I really liked the platform. I I really liked writing an essay、yeah. on this website in comparison to doing it on Word or Docs. Yeah, because you could add in these images between paragraphs or between pages, and it really helped realize. Like what you were saying and、mm-hmm. how you could convey tone and mood, and it just looks really cool, doesn't、mm-hmm. it? Right. Okay, now here's the thing. I-, I love what you guys are saying, and I said that it looks a little juvenile, and I think sometimes a high school or a college professor might shy away from it because of that, which is a big mistake on their part. Be- yeah, because because、so、yeah,、too. right. Like as far as reading what she had to say, it was much more impactful to me than、mm-hmm. reading like a five-page essay.、Mm-hmm. A lot of times in classes, they want to see that you 
worked super hard and super long on something, right. but you can for sure walk away from it without learning a thing. <laughs> um, yeah. In this scenario, it seems almost counterintuitive, but you're forced, like, even with the limit of pictures, which is something that I really struggled with, because I was like, oh, this is frustrating, but it yeah. forces you to know exactly and exactly what you want and the uh-huh. concept that you're talking about to choose a picture, and you don't forget that picture. Hey, you know, you know what I liken it to? I liken it to interacting with someone who speaks a different language and you're trying to use hand gestures and your and your your repertoire of hand gestures are very limited right so you have to get creative on how you on how you do hand gestures to try to communicate a message and hopefully not violate any social international <laughs> norms <laughs> exactly so let me ask you this we're doing a a final exam here in just a week and one of the options, and I believe me, I, I, I won't be surprised at all if you say, no, I'm not going to go for that. One of the options is they can write an essay about Ashoka or Siddhartha, and they can go back and look at their storyboard as ammunition for this uh, essay. Are either of you going to opt for that? I think I'm definitely going to write mine about Siddhartha because I find Buddhism really interesting, and mm-hmm. I find the Buddha very interesting. Yeah. And I already sort of delved in deep um, into my topic and wrote a long paper. Yeah, you might as well just yeah. <laughs> utilize it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How about Cusp? Are you going to go that route? I think definitely, especially because before we even went into Storybird, there was a format, and it was it was the Hero's Journey template. Mm-hmm. And that just, honestly, to me, that looks exactly like an essay outline. I'm oh, able yeah. to take Good that point. and... I've already pulled out the important pieces of information. Yeah. It's just going to be a matter of plugging it in. Plugging man. it in. Well, now look, I'll tell you what, listeners, and I'll definitely have a link to that. It, it, it's a hyperdoc, and it's just uh, the five stages of the hero's journey, which, which I talked about in the introduction. You guys, now you're this is your opportunity. You've been deputized to help teachers all over the world. If you can give them one piece of advice on something that they can do. To either utilize Storybird, the hero's journey, images, anything. Go for it, Corazon. I would say to try to branch out and find different types of formats that your students could mm-hmm. use and try to, don't be afraid of technology because I know a lot of teachers don't like to use technology and think that it gets confusing so they want to stick to what they are used to, hey, like the Google presentation. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. I'm going to interrupt you for a moment because I, I have a question about that. Do you think that some teachers find technology to be dehumanizing, like like not allowing for creativity? Yeah, actually, yeah, because they think that if you're not writing it out or if you're not drawing something mm-hmm. or creating a poster that you're not putting forth effort and you're not thinking about it and you're not being creative. But a lot of people... Myself included, mm-hmm. I'm not a good, I'm not good at drawing. I'm not good at creating physical things. That surprises <laughs> things. me. Yeah. <laughs> but I enjoy using word choice and color and. Yes, you do. <laughs> to yes, you do, man. I, I recognize that about you before you were even in my class. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing you one time and I heard you interact with somebody and I thought, that's an interesting person. I hope she's in my class someday. <laughs> Okay, Cus, your turn. I think, like, this class I've been in here for, I think it's now a year and a half. Yeah, that's um, right. Total for classes. And yeah. it, it's come to be one of my most favorite classes because in everything that we learn, it's always, like, pushed or backed up with some type of project uh-huh. that makes a lot of sense. Um, everything that we do is broken down into things that are visual which not only keeps me engaged, but uh-huh. helps me to understand it. So every time I go to take a test, I feel well prepared. And I feel like that's that's like a really amazing thing that a teacher can do. So right. if they can branch out and use technology and break it down and say, how can we keep kids more engaged? They're going to want to do better automatically. Because well, thank you. The reward is. Thank you so much. And, much and here's better. here's a challenge I have for you guys. Regardless of what jobs you do in the future, you're probably going to do presentations. And that concept of making them visually appealing is really important. For sure. All right, ladies, I'll tell you what, I just love talking to you. I'm going to be sad next semester <laughs> when you guys 
are awesome. Are you, are you in my class next semester? I'm not. I'm in are you in my class next semester? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be taking Oh, thank goodness. At least I have one. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So here we are at the What You Can Do Tomorrow section. I'm so excited that Samantha and Merrick came on the show. It was so evident. It was so gratifying for me to listen to them talk about how this template, how storytelling, how this peer teaching helped them not only grasp a, a subject that they weren't familiar with, but embrace it, revel in it. I was really, I was really pleased with what they had to say. I hope you guys are inspired to give this a try. So the very first thing you gotta do is you gotta navigate to the HyperDocs girls website and make a copy of the hero's journey template it's perfect it'll it'll really make things a lot easier for you next i want you to consider your curriculum think about some individuals that are coming up in your curriculum that are really significant really important maybe could teach larger lessons about your curriculum and then I want you to consider a way that you can have kids maybe get into small groups or pair up and tell one another a story about significant individuals in your curriculum. And finally, investigate this really cool little platform called Storybird. Yep, there's a link on my show notes. Hey, this hero's template journey is wonderful. It makes sense to people. It takes a, a complex issue and makes it familiar. Hey, good luck tomorrow engaging your kids. Show notes for this episode can be found at jamesallensternament.com. If you enjoy hacking engagement, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes.